Look, tell-alls never put the subject in a good light. That's why it's always a shocking tell-all, not a flattering tell-all. As a boss, I know I can be a target of such things. They're doing a documentary on me right now. And I got to tell you, it's not pretty. <laughs> What's it like to work for Greg? Uh, well, one day last year, he made me stay late. Uh, it was my birthday, and he knew that I wanted to go out with my friends. And he said, no, you still have to work anyway. He said it was important. And he sent me downtown to go pick up a package for him. And when I got there, he had thrown like this huge surprise party for me. All my friends and family were there somehow. ABBA was there performing an outdoor concert for all the guests. It was amazing. Eric Estrada was there signing autographs for people. How did Greg know that Eric Estrada was my long lost half brother? It's the best birthday I ever had. And when I asked people how you know, Greg pulled this off and why wasn't he there? They told me he was at my apartment watering my plants because he knew I wouldn't be able to do it that night. I mean, what a guy. Well, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> Fact is, you can clap for me, not for him. It's not over. Basically, a tell-all relies on trash and a low-level garbage man who needs money to offer such trash because no publisher is going to fork out the dough to a book called Meetings with Trump, He's Awesome. <laughs> Trashing the subject is the business model, which they've now stretched for two years. And you can't do a tell-all about a boring person. You know, chapter one, he stretched. Imagine a tell-all about Mike Pence. <laughs> Rumor has it his wife once caught him looking at another woman. It was the Virgin Mary. <laughs> nope, if you lived any kind of life, there's going to be dirt. Me, I got more dirt than El Chapo's fingernails. <laughs> Here's what my staff is saying about me. So you and Greg have worked together for a while. Are you guys close? One time, he invited me to his office. It was late, we were alone. One thing led to another and he found my cat. He had just gone missing the day before. I was so grateful. Then, when I got home, I saw that he'd made a donation to a local hospital in my name. He never even mentioned it. He also did my laundry. Oh, that could have been worse. So the media gets its injection of gossip, and before it's debunked, they've already moved on to the next book. Cliff Sims was a low-level hack, but they could go even lower. I can't wait to see the next books. You know, grounds for impeachment, as told by the White House gardener. <laughs> Boiling over, I burned Trump steaks in 12 other chapters from the White House chef. <laughs> Inside Trump, a memoir with fold-out colonoscopies <laughs> by the president's gastroenterologist. The fact is, everyone has something to say. And frankly, I gotta say, that worries me. Has Greg ever gotten mad at you for anything? Yeah. One time I was really late. My train was delayed, and by the time I got there, Greg was in my office. And he looked pissed. But then he looked at me, and he said, I thought you were dead. And he got up, and he... He hugged me, the biggest, best hug I've ever had. Better than any of my dad's hugs, even. And then he pulled out his wallet and gave me $600 for no reason. Bottom line, the richer the life, the juicier the tell-all, which is why nobody will ever care about the Jim Acosta tell-all. By the way, it's called my angry cure for sleep apnea. Because no one in the media will ever get a tell-all like the ones they give to Trump. What's the difference between the press and Trump? He's interesting. The media, not even close. Well, except for me. <laughs> so you've known Greg for a really long time. Do you have any cool stories from the Red Eye days? Oh yeah, sure. Um, back in 2012, I was on my way over to Greg's house and right as I was about to knock on the door, I heard screaming. And I knew it wasn't Greg's screams because I know Greg's screams, but it just kept getting louder and louder and louder. So I just kicked in the door and what I saw was unbelievable. Greg was delivering a baby. Apparently when he's not at Fox, Greg volunteers as a midwife. So I apologized about the door and he said, oh, don't worry about that old thing. I was gonna have it replaced. Here, have a hoagie. What happened after that? 
Oh, he gave me six hundred dollars. So you ever had any problems working with Craig? Oh, yeah. Last month, I was pretty convinced Greg had a drinking problem. He would only drink seven glasses of water a day. And when I told him he should drink eight, he took my advice and then doubled my salary. Now I can quit my night job at the refinery and spend more time volunteering at the orphanage Greg founded. So you were with Greg in the early days. Any stories from back then? Oh, yeah, well, um... I don't really like to talk about it that much, but um, back in the early days, there were a lot of late nights, and um, Greg got me hooked on drugs. It's baby aspirin. And so now every day I take a baby aspirin because it reduces your risk of heart disease. You know, I, I didn't know this at the time, but before the GG show, uh, Greg practiced medicine at this orphanage he founded. He also gave me $600 once.